returning to the Lord's table with an understanding that we are not, we are not worthy. For surely we are not, for we have all sinned. We have come short of the glory of God. Yes, and therefore repentance is commanded of us all. And so we come to the Lord this morning with humility, with our hearts lowly bend. Yes, we come to the Lord for mercy. We come to him for forgiveness. We come to him to experience his grace. Just one more time. We come to the Lord this morning. And so, brothers and sisters, if we listen keenly to the word of the Lord coming out of the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, in St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, we hear the word of the Lord speaking to us. Amen. The Bible said, says, and as they were, as they were eating, yes, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and break it, and gave it, gave it to the disciples, and said, take, eat, this is my body. Yes, this is my body. Then the Bible says, Then he took the cup and gave thanks. Amen. And gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. And we continue to read in those verses where the Bible says, for this is my blood, my blood, amen, of a new, new covenant, which is shed for many. And so, brothers and sisters, it is with this kind of understanding as we watch Jesus invites his disciples, yes, and invite them to participate in what we call the Lord's Supper, or the communion. And so it is with that mindset this morning. We begin our service this morning. Brothers and sisters seeking to be closer drawn. To the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes as we come nearer. And nearer. And nearer. To the Lord our God. So we, we hear the words. Hear the words of the of a song. You may be seated, everybody. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Prayer of our heart this morning, everybody. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Close to thee. Oh, yes. Close to Closer to you. Closer to oh, yes. Closer to And 
so brothers and sisters this morning we come recognizing that we are not worthy for we have grievously sinned against God we have gone against his will we have gone against his spirit yes we have gone against his word yes we have come short of the glory of God we come to him this morning with an understanding that we need his help we need the help of the Lord of the Lord our God we come brothers and sisters to the Lord's table this morning not because there is any magic yeah for surely there is none no magic brothers and sisters in these emblems that we participate in there's no magic in this bread there's no magic in this wine we come because they are symbolic brothers and sisters of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ that was broken on Calvary for us and we come O oh God to be identified with the crucified Lamb of Calvary for we come with this understanding that we are the ones that should have been crucified we are the ones that should have had a, a crown of thorns placed upon our head we are the ones that have, should have had rusty nails in our hands and feet we are the ones oh god that should have had a spear gone to our side we are the ones that should have been given vinegar to drink we come brothers and sisters to identify with what Jesus Christ has done for us on Calvary. And so we come to the Lord our God this morning. As we are preparing to pray. I am thine, O Lord, and I have heard thy voice and we do. I long to me, but I long to rise. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to. be our prayer to the Lord today consecrate me now to thy service Lord by thy poor of grace let my soul look up let my soul look up with a steadfast We're going to God in prayer now. Me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, oh, to the cross where thou hast
we give a praise to the Lord, everybody? Can we, right where we are, everybody, just bow our hearts before the Lord? And can we go to God in prayer? For God is just one prayer away. Can we commit our ways to the Lord? Can we consecrate our lives to the Lord? Can we just go to God, everybody, everywhere? Can we just go to the Lord in prayer? Oh God, just as, oh God, we are, we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father. We come to you knowing that you are our God. We come to you, God, with an understanding that you are sovereign. Lord, heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. We come to you this morning. Oh Lord, oh God, we come to you, Heavenly Father. We come to you, God, recognizing our own folly, our own failures. We come to you recognizing that we have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have wandered away from the Lord, our God. We come to you, God, oh God, for grace this morning. We come to you this morning for mercy. We come to you, Lord, asking you to blot out our sins and our transgressions that are ever before us, O oh God, and, and to forgive us, O oh God, and cleanse us through the blood of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We come to you this morning. We come to you, Heavenly Father. O oh God, for it is you who sent your only Son, Lord God, to die upon the cross, O oh God, and to bring us redemption. Oh God, to purchase our pardon, we come to you this morning. Oh God, we come to you, oh God, Lord, for grace, for you to increase our faith, to trust God and to believe God. Lord, that we might have a testimony on this earth. Lord, that we walk with God and that we serve God and that we live for Jesus. We come to you this morning, God, for help. Lord God, we come to you for strength, for we are weak, but thou art mighty. We come to you, Heavenly Father. Oh Lord, our God, we come just as we are. We come with our sin, we come with our shame. We come with our burdens, we come with our cares. Oh God, we come with all our maladies, and God, our sicknesses of every sort and kind, but we come to Jesus. We come to you, O oh Lord, our God. We come to you, God, for in you we can find refuge and strength. And so we come to you this morning. God, we come, we come, we come to the cross of Jesus. Identifying with this cross on which, God, you were suspended, God, we come. Lord God, as we come this morning, Will you consecrate us to your service? Will you sanctify us afresh? Like you prayed for the disciples, oh God. We even know right now you are praying for us. That we will be sanctified. That we will be kept from the evils of this world. Oh God, that even while we live in this dark and sin-infested world. That God, we will be kept from the evils of this world. And that our light will be a beacon shining out for Jesus. In this dark and dreary world, Lord, we come to you this morning. We come to you, Heavenly Father. We cast our every care on you today. We come, Heavenly Father, to the Lord our God. Lord, draw us nearer. Draw us closer, we pray. As we come to thee, O Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. We bless your name and we just appreciate thee, O Lord our God. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We come to you this morning, Lord, for mercy. We come to you for forgiveness. We come to you for wisdom. We come for you for peace. We come to you, Lord, for love. That love will rise within our heart. For surely it is you who have loved us with an everlasting love. And it's you who have shown us how to love one another. We come to thee, O oh God, 
for an increase of love. Oh God, we come to you this morning. And we give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We come to thee. We come to thee. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we just give a praise to the Lord, everybody? Can we just give another praise to the Lord, everybody? And so, Lord, we come to you this morning. We come to the Lord our God. Join me, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this bread and we thank you for this wine. Symbolic of your body and your blood which was broken on Calvary for us. And like as you met with the disciples, O oh God, in similar manner, breaking of bread and wine, we ask you today, in the name of Jesus, that you may bless and sanctify this bread and this wine. O oh God, that even as we participate, O oh God, our spirit will be renewed. O oh God, our conviction will be strengthened. Oh God, as we continue to live for Jesus, walk with Jesus, we pray that even as we participate in this communion, that the sick will be healed and that the oppressed will go free. We pray, Heavenly Father, that burdens will be lifted. We come to you, O oh Lord, our oh God, as we come, God. Hear us, we pray, O oh God, for this is the prayer of our heart. We thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Can everybody just shout another praise to Jesus? Just shout another praise to Jesus, everybody. Amen, amen, and amen. At the cross, at the cross, where I find... Invite, invite the officers to come. With burning of my heart, roll away. was there by faith that I received my sight and now I am happy all the way Ooh, at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the Where I first saw a life And the burdens of my heart was rolled away Who it was there by faith that I received
Can we just give a praise to the Lord, everybody? Lord. Yes, brothers and sisters. And so, as Jesus went to the cross, the sins that we could not pay for, because our sins were so many, it was Jesus who paid the price for our sins. Yes, he paid the price. Yeah, the price that we should have paid, Jesus paid it. So Paul sums it up and says, he who was rich became poor, so that we who were poor could become rich. Can we just give a praise to the Lord, everybody? Can we just give one more praise to the Lord, everybody? Yes, so that we who were poor could become rich. And we just thank God and thank God and thank God for that. Yes, so that we can have life and have it more and more abundantly. I lost and did my Savior blood and did my soul bring down praise everybody and so it is in this manner as Jesus is sitting with his disciples Bible says he took bread and blessed it and break it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you let us all eat
to the same manner, brothers and sisters. Jesus took the cup. And after he had given thanks, he blessed it and says, This is a new covenant I make with you. Let us all drink. When peace like come death my way when sorrows when sorrows like sea
morning if it is well with your soul hallelujah oh we thank you almighty God in this very same atmosphere in this very same atmosphere our Lord and Savior is with us we want to give him a continued worship and praise because it is in this type of atmosphere that he comes and he heals that he comes and he delivers, that he comes and he sets us free. Oh, I want to give him thanks this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to ask the praise team to continue in this vein of worship as we lift up holy hands and our voices to the king to give him praise this morning. It is well with our soul. Praise God forevermore hallelujah just continue to worship just continue to praise the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah our God reigns oh blessed be the name of Jesus have you got a praise for the reigning king glory and honor and praise be unto his name cherubims Seraphims, 24 elders, we can join in this morning with them. Hallelujah. And lift up praise to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and worship him. Hallelujah. 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 Reign, Jesus. Reign, Jesus. Lift up your hands, all he gates. Lift them up, the everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Reign, Jesus. Reign. Hallelujah. Reign, Jesus. Reign. Jesus 
Hallelujah. 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 Have you got a shout of praise this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. Worthy to receive glory. Sin 
and honor, wisdom and power, God of my rock, in him will I trust. My strong tower and my refuge, Savior, deliverer and soon coming King. worship team was ministering I, I hear clearly that we must give God praise but there are times when he does things for us and we present ourselves in it more than stepping aside and say thanks be to God my brother and sister I'm going to just tell you so hear what happened whatever it is that the Lord has allowed us to do whenever it is time that you must give praise Make sure all praise and all worship goes unto him. Oh, glory to God. Make sure that you step aside and put him first. As we shared in the communion. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, Father, for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your love. And we declare it is only because of you that we are here. Oh, thanks be to the Lord God Almighty. Thank you. Thank you, praise and worship. Thank you, Almighty God. At this time, you may be seated, my brothers and sisters. At this time, I would have asked for Sister Georgette Campbell to make herself ready to come to us with the welcome and the decoration of faith and notices. And right after that, you'll be having Pastor Ocean Walker. Thank you. Shall we 
Shall we worship the Lord? Shall we worship the Lord another time? Lift up holy hands and worship God. God is really in this place this morning. And all he desires of us is for us to what? Praise him. At this time, I must extend welcome to the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I just want to say something from a song that says, Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come. All the angels are crying holy to the Lamb who sits upon the throne. You can imagine 24 hours, how many days in the week, the angels are just crying, holy, holy. Let us stand and in our own way worship God this morning. Worship the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Father, we worship you this morning. We lift you up. We magnify your name. You are a great God. There is none like you, Jesus. This morning, I fall down my heart and worship you. At this time, I want to extend welcome to Reverend Fisher and family. Could we give him a big round of applause? <laughs> Reverend O'Shane Walker, Reverend Dwight Dawkins, who is in the congregation with us. Let us put our hands together and greet all our ministers. <laughs> to our officers and their families, we welcome you. To the praise team, to the choir, the media and tech team, and to our ushers. Let us all give them a round of applause. We welcome you this morning to our service. Officers, praise team, choir, media, and tech ushers. God bless you for the work you're doing. At this time, we want to extend welcome to our online members who are in the various islands various parts of the world in diaspora. Let us give them a round of applause. And to you members in the sanctuary, God bless you for coming. You're looking gorgeous, beautiful. Just give yourself a round of applause. Brethren, clap yourself better than that. And to our online visitors, wherever you are, what continent, what time of the day or night, we welcome you. Thank you for choosing House of Praise as your church to worship this Sunday. God bless you. Let us give them a round of applause. And to our visitors who are in the sanctuary, our very important persons, could you stand for me, please? All those who are visiting with us this morning in our service, stand for me, please. Remain standing, remain standing, remain standing. Remain standing, visitors. Brethren, let us give them another round of applause. I just want to say thank you for choosing us of praise, New Testament Church of God, to worship with us today. There are so many other churches that you could have gone to, but you chose us. We thank you and we welcome you. And we pray that you'll enjoy our service today. God bless you and please come again. <laughs> At this time, we are going to move into our declaration of faith. We are going to remain seated as we all read our declaration of faith together. We believe in the verbal inspiration of the Bible, in one God eternally existing in three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of the Father, conceived of the Holy Ghost, and born of the Virgin Mary. That Jesus was crucified, buried, and raised from the dead. That he ascended to heaven, and as today at the right hand of the Father, as intercessor. That all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, 
and that repentance is commanded of God for all and necessary for forgiveness of sin. That justification, regeneration, and the new birth are wrought by faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. In sanctification, subsequent to the new birth, through faith in the blood of Christ, through the word, and by the Holy Ghost. Holiness to be God's standard of living for his people. In the baptism with the Holy Ghost, subsequent to a clean heart. In speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. And that is the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In water baptism by immersion. And all who repent should be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Divine healing is provided for all in the atonement, in the Lord's Supper and washing of the saints' feet, in the pre and second coming of Jesus, first to resurrect the righteous dead and to catch away the living saints to him in the air, second to reign on the earth a thousand years, in the bodily resurrection, eternal life for the righteous and eternal punishment for the wicked. Praise be to God. Visitors, that is what we believe. This is our notices for today, Sunday, April 7, 2024. This evening, Sunday, all are invited to service in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. On Tuesday, we'll be seeing a citizens meeting at 7 p.m. via Zoom. On Wednesday, fasting service at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary and at 7.30 p.m., it will be Brayton's Crusade, and we as the church will be supporting and participating. On Friday, Young Adult Ministry Fellowship at 7 p.m., and the modality to be announced. On Saturday, we'll be a prayer meeting led by Ladies Ministry at 7 a.m. And, and on Saturday, we'll be Teens Fellowship, and the modality will be announced. Spanish Town Upcoming Events, April 2024 to May 2024. On April 14, that is next week Sunday, will be our Ladies Ministry One Day Convention under the theme Call to Discipleship. In the evening will be Choirs in Praise at 6 p.m. On April 21st, the Rally Group Joseph will be hosting a concert. And on April 28th, we'll be baptism. Spanish Town District Leadership Training with Reverend Dr. Osborne Fisher will be on May 5th. Who should attend? All. That includes officers, department leaders, members, friends, and visitors. Funeral and bereave. We continue to pray for and support the families of the fallen persons who have lost loved ones. Brother Cecil Walker, brother, has passed. The funeral arrangement will be announced. Sister Janice Book's daughter has passed. Funeral arrangement will be announced. Sister Dixon, who was a shut-in of this church, has passed. Please keep the family in prayers. Upcoming rally. Clifton New Testament Church of God rally will be on April 26th, and the men's choir will be representing the church. All the notices, the rally group Job is having a car accessories fundraiser. Please see Sister Dunstan. Sister Dunstan, please stand. And Sister Georgette Campbell, that's me, to place your order. Sister Tracy Douglas has tickets for a conference being held by Women of New Dimension. Please see the post on the notice board for more information. Sister Euphema Wright, we know her as Nurse Wright, is in the Mandeville Hospital. She will be doing a surgery tomorrow, Monday, April 8th. Please remember her in prayer. God bless you. These are the notices. Have a blessed week. Hallelujah. While the parents and guardian make their way to the altar, the hymn is 137. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Can we all stand? Hallelujah. It's 
so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest. And the Lord said, I know Abraham that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And in St. Luke's gospel we read, now concerning the infant Christ we read, when the eight days were accomplished, his name was called Jesus and they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And the child grew and walked strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. We honor it by saying, thanks be to God. Congregation, you may be seated. Let me commend you, parents and guardian for taking your child in the house of the Lord for Christian dedication. There are many options you could have chosen elsewhere. And so I want to thank you this morning for bringing your child to house of praise for Christian dedication. Amen. This is an expression of your faith in the Lord God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. The task of parenting can be very difficult and unpredictable, especially in this time and in this area, and especially when we have a lot of identity crises. Amen. But it is the prayer of my heart today that as parents and guardian, you will find the strength, wisdom, and courage in God to grow your child in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. I say to you today, God is depending on you. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Parents and guardians, I just ask that you do two things while you nurture, amen, and grow your child in the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Teach your child to love God. Amen. amen. Teach your child to love God. And teach your child also to love God people because in so doing you will fulfill the two greatest commandments given to us by God. First, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And secondly, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. At this time I'm going to give you a pledge. And if you are in agreement, you will say, 
we will. And I shall be watching the lips. Amen. In the sight of God and in the presence of these witnesses, do you solemnly undertake to bring up this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord? Children, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Do you promise to lead your children early to accept Christ as their personal Savior and Lord? Do you promise that your home will be a home of prayer where the word is read to your children and so that your children can grow up in a spiritual atmosphere? Amen. I'm going to ask the congregation at this time to stand. Congregation. Do you accept these children as a gift from God? And do you promise to do your very best to assist these parents and guardians in growing up their children in the fear and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ? Congregation, if this is your pledge and commitment, can you just say amen? Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated, congregation. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that we all just stretch our hands towards the parents and the guardians here at the altar as we go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God-loving Father, we give you thanks this morning for the gift of life. And so, Lord Almighty, as these parents and, have, and guardians have brought their children into the house of the Lord for Christian dedication, for, O oh God, this is an expression of their faith in you. O oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus that, O oh God, you will touch these children. We pray, God Almighty, that you will touch their minds, Almighty God. We pray, God, that the spirit of excellency will rest upon them, Almighty God. We pray for retaining ability, Almighty God. I pray in the name of Jesus that, oh God Almighty, you will shield them and put a hedge around them, Almighty God, like you did for Job, Almighty God. We come against every accident, every arm, oh God Almighty, every demonic attack, oh God Almighty. And oh God, let your blood, oh God, rest upon them, Almighty God, and cause them to grow, Father, in the fear and in the admonition. Oh God of you, touch the parents, oh God, and the guardians. Give them the strength and the courage, almighty God. Oh God, where there is lacking, we pray for provision, almighty God. Bless them, we pray, God almighty, as we present them to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I now present Micah Hebert, dedicated and blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I now present Matthew Hebert, dedicated and blessed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Congregation, can you stand at this time and just stretch your hands towards them? Amen. As we pronounce a blessing upon them. Choristers will help us at this time. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon be gracious. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. One more time, one more 
sang and said, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you for coming. Normally, I give the Father in abundance. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Amen. The Lord bless you. And keep you. Make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The Lord turn Face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I acknowledge the presence of the Lord that is very Amen. evident in our midst. Secondly, to Dr. Fisher and Lady Fisher and family, all the officers, amen, members and saints, those that are viewing online, accept holy greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen to Reverend Dawkins. Amen. And to Evangelist Rosalind Burton from the USA. Stand up, Evangelist, and just give us a wave offering. Amen. Down there in the blood. Praise the name of Jesus. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. Praise God. God is a good God. God is a good God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we are going to be worshiping the Lord with our gifts. Amen. Praise God. Those that are viewing online, amen, you can be a part of this worship. Amen. The details will be on the screen and you can select from your choice. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you just stand with your gift? Amen. As we are going to look to the Lord in prayer this morning. God is moving by His Spirit. He's moving in all the earth. Hallelujah. Signs and wonders. It's moving, hallelujah. Moving. Move, move, oh Lord, in me. My God, He is moving by His Spirit. He is moving. Oh, we are 
I still feel like I want to do it one more time. Oh, oh my God. He is moving by His Spirit. He's moving. He knows. He is. Oh, it's time. Lord and our God. Name of Jesus. How excellent is your name in all the earth. And the angels call him holy. For he is the Lord God Almighty. This whole earth is filled with his glory. So God, we shabak you this morning, Almighty God. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory. And so, Lord Almighty, as we come this morning, Almighty God, we present our gifts before you. We pray for our increase. Oh, God, where there is lack, we pray for provision. Oh, God Almighty, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will cause doors to be open, Almighty God, and windows. We pray, God, that as your people give back a portion of that which you have blessed them with. We pray in the name of Jesus that, oh God, that you will bless them and cause an increase. Lord, let whatsoever thing that they put their hands to prosper. And we pray for increase today in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. And we give you honor in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up, oh God, oh God, these keys, oh God, to these house before you, God Almighty. We ask in the name of Jesus that, oh God, as I lift it up to you, I pray, God, even now, you will assign angels, oh God, upon that property. We pray, God Almighty, that you will visit every room, Almighty God. Oh God, let anything that has been set up, Almighty God, oh God, be derailed right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that your presence, that your peace, which passes all understanding, oh God, will rest, remain, and abide, oh God, in that house, and oh God, with the occupants in the name of Jesus. Oh God, put a hedge around that house like you did for Job Almighty God. We lift it up to you and we tell you thanks, oh God Almighty, oh God, for your provision in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up the key, oh God, to this automobile to you. We pray, God Almighty, that you will cover such one that will go around the steering. Cover every mechanical part, Almighty God. Lord, fly every trap. Oh, God Almighty, I pray in the name of Jesus. That, oh, God Almighty, that you will assign angels, oh, God, to go with them. Oh, God, as they traverse, oh, God, on the roadway. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up this key to you once more. And we pray that you will bless it and sanctify it, Almighty God. Stamp it with your blood. Stamp the driver with your blood, Almighty God. Stamp this vehicle with your blood, Almighty God. God and we give you thanks again for your provision but through the almighty God you are able to do the exceedingly the abundantly that which we can ever ask think or imagine and so God in praise and in adoration we give you thanks in the mighty name 
of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Somebody worship the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please follow the directions of the ushers as they come to us now. I hand over to the praise team at this time. Someone would like to hear the good news. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Tell it that our Savior died Amen. to save this world from sin. Oh, yeah. Tell it. Tell wherever, it, brother. Tell it, sister. Wherever you Tell go. it wherever you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell it, tell it wherever you go. Someone would like to hear the good news, you know. Tell it of the Savior died to save us all from sin. Tell it wherever you go. Tell it, tell it wherever you go. Someone would like to hear the good news, you know. Tell it of the Savior died to save us all from sin. Tell it wherever you go. Tell it, tell it wherever you go. Someone would like to hear the good news, you know. Tell it of the Savior died to save your soul from sin. from sin, tell it wherever you go, wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can, I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like the sea, I'll praise the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. Tell it, tell it wherever you go. Someone would like to hear the good news you know. Tell it how the Savior died to save your soul from sin. Tell it wherever you go. I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him. Whenever I can, I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him. Whenever I can, I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I 
I praise the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I praise him. Wherever I can, I praise him. For his love surrounds me like a sea. I praise the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him whenever I can. I'll praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus, lift up the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus lifted me. Wherever I am, I'll praise him. Whenever I can, I'll praise him. For his love surround me like a sea. I'll praise the name of Jesus. I'll lift up the name of Jesus, for the name. Of Jesus lifted me wherever I am. I praise Him whenever I can. I praise Him for His love surrounds me like a sea. I praise the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus lifted me wherever I am. I praise, I praise him whenever I can. I, I, I praise him for his love surrounds me like a sea. I praise the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. For the name of Jesus lifted me. To hear the good news, you know, telling how the Savior died, the Savior, so from sin, tell it wherever you go. Tell it wherever you go. Whether you're in the workplace, tell it. Whether you're at home, tell it. Whether you're at an event, tell it. Whether you're meeting strangers, tell it. Tell it wherever you go. The good news. Oh, hallelujah. That news that brings life and hope. That news that brings healing. Tell it wherever you go. So my brothers and sisters, we are reaching that time of the service where we'll be hearing the word. Right after this, you're going to be hearing the ministry of the choir. And immediately after that, we will stand and welcome Reverend Dr. Osborne Fisher, host pastor, angel of this church for the word. I want to say, Thank you for allowing me to be the moderator this morning. And I will only part with what I've heard. Whatever it is that the Lord is doing for you in this season, make sure you give him all the praise. Whatever things he allows you to do, because it's because of him we do good works. So whatever it is we do, make sure you give him what is due to him all honor and all praise and all glory and i declare to you when you do that what will happen is that you will receive even more and more through his grace be blessed in the lord my brothers and sisters receive now the ministry of the choir
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He is wonderful. All praises to the Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He is wonderful. Hallelujah, 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 he is wonderful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord, shout a hallelujah for the Lord everybody, shout another hallelujah for the Lord everybody, he is wonderful. Yes, he is wonderful. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah. Still have another praise for Jesus, everybody. Still have another praise of the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. We give you praise and glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory and honor. Hallelujah. To the wonderful name of Jesus. Glory and power. Wonderful Jesus. We love you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We praise your name, Lord, and we thank you. Yes, you have been, and you are, and you are so, so wonderful. We just praise you today. Thank you, Jesus. Still have one more final, one other praise to Jesus, everybody. Amen, amen, amen. Let's put our hands together for the choir, everybody. Let's put our hands together for the choir, opening their heart and ministering to us. Amen. Thank you ever, 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 ever so much. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the name. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. To assistant, to assistant pastor, Reverend Walker, Reverend Dwight Dawkins in our midst. Amen. Our officers, brothers and sisters and friends, those present and those joining us in social space i greet you today in the wonderful name of jesus god is a good and faithful god can we just give him one more praise everybody want to pause one more time and and just to express yes maybe on behalf of the rally committee and the entire church community our sincere appreciation and thanks to one and all who came out on our rally night on tuesday night amen want to thank you one and all, yeah, yes, go ahead, put your hands together. Thank you, one and all, amen, for participating, for coming out, for being here as we worship and give praises to God and raise some money on Tuesday night, God. Amen, amen. Thank you ever so much. Our rally continues throughout this month until the end of, end of this month. We continue to work towards our, our target and our various projects. Amen in our rally activities. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of Jesus. On, on the 28th, brothers and sisters, 28th of this month in the evening, the 28th of this month in the evening, 
we're, we're going to join together with many pastors and many churches across St. Catherine. And we're going into Spanish Town Square on the 28th. Everybody, please note that. On the 28th, it's about 5.30 in the evening. We are going to have a massive gathering. Amen. In the Spanish Town Square. Amen. And we, as we give praises to God and present and declare the gospel of Jesus, of Jesus Christ. So pastors and churches from all over St. Catherine will be coming right into Spanish Town Square. I trust that everybody will plan to be there. Our choir is going to be singing. I trust they're singing this same song. Yeah, this is song. I, yes, this, I trust this is the same song they'll be singing right in Spanish Town Square. Amen. Amen. On the 28th, we are going to be there. Amen. God has been good to us and we continue. Amen. To pray for our community. We continue to pray for our nation and pray for our community. Amen. Not so sure what's happening on the outside. Somebody help me. Huh? Yeah. I'm not so sure what's happening. Somebody help me. Okay, yeah. But if they're outside, you need to get them back in as quick as possible. But we need for them to hear the word of the Lord. All right? So tell them to do whatever they're doing and do it quickly. Get them back inside. Because we don't mind if everybody hear the word of the Lord. Amen, church? You have your Bibles with you. Go with me to a verse. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. There's a verse that we will reflect on today. As we, as we are in what we call discipleship month. Where our focus is on discipleship. Yes, amen. That discipline called discipleship. And that's what we are focusing on. Amen, amen, taking on the image and likeness of Jesus Christ and growing as believers. Sometime last year, amen, I tried to preach this sermon or I started preaching this sermon to a, to a group of believers. I trust, brothers and sisters, it will be meaningful for us today as we reflect on what Peter is saying, but not only Peter because we pay attention to what John has to say and also what Paul the Apostle has to say as it relates to spiritual growth. Here Peter in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. But grow in grace. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One more time. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever, we say. Amen. Father, let us pray. Father, we ask you in these moments, Lord, that you will bless thy word unto our hearts and glorify your name. Thank you for your presence and thank you for your spirit. Thank you for granting us insight and wisdom. Thank you, God, for granting us understanding as we reflect on your word. Oh, God, may the word of God be like a hammer to us, oh, God. May the word of God be like light in the midst of our darkness. Father, we come to you for you tell us your word is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Or you say to us that the word of God should dwell in us richly, admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and, and spiritual songs. Oh God, let the word of the Lord, our oh God, come alive in our hearts today. Oh God, to bring salvation, to bring deliverance, to bring healing. In the name of Jesus, 
Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Can everybody say? Amen. 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 And amen. Grow in grace. Grow in, in grace. Grow in grace, Peter says. This is, the, this is the second letter. It's the second letter of Peter. Yes, it's addressed to a very wide, wide circle of early Christians. He wrote them one letter before. And here he's writing them a second letter. Yes, to group of believers and early Christians. The concern, brothers and sisters, the concern of Peter is to combat the work of false teachers. For there are a lot of false teaching that was going on among the among the the believers, Peter is writing in an effort to combat the false teaching. And we find that not only Peter was doing this, but we also note that John was writing similar sentences to combat the false teachings that were, that were, that were going on and were were being promoted, my brothers and sisters, in Peter. Yes, in that's why in Second Peter, we hear Peter talking to us and really drawing, brothers and sisters, a, a conclusion. For this is the conclusion, verse 18, of Peter's writing. He draws this conclusion by reverting to the, the great theme, amen, of his entire writing. For the sum total of Peter's theme as he writes to these believers is about the knowledge of God. The knowledge of who? God. Yes, the knowledge of God. One of the very prominent heresies that they had to be contend with is known as Gnosticism. And Peter was writing to them to tell the believer, oh, to pay attention, pay attention, and take heed to the knowledge, the knowledge of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody just give a praise to Jesus? Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. For brothers and sisters, the best precaution, the, bre the best precaution against being influenced by false, false doctrine and being carried away amen by them is to make spiritual progress and this is what Peter is saying if you are going to prevent yourself believers from being carried away by false doctrines and teachings and heresies then as believers what you must do is that you must make spiritual progress. You must grow in the Lord and in his knowledge. If you are going to prevent yourself from being carried away yeah, by the cunning and crafty teachings of the day. This was Peter's message and the theme he was raising up with these believers and that's why we say it one more time listen to Peter 
Listen to Peter's word. But after having said a whole long list of things, we will not have time to go into them. After saying a whole list of things, Peter says, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's all that I've said to you to help you to come back false teaching. I mean, all the instructions I've given and all the teachings I've raised up, Peter said, but go in grace. For you are growing in grace and in the knowledge of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. No false teaching can overrun you. Peter says it's about growth, 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 growing, growing. You see, brothers and sisters, the scripture reveals for us, the scripture reveals four stages of spiritual growth. Are you with me, everybody? The scripture reveals four stages of spiritual growth. Yes, four stages. Yes, so when you sum up the Christian life, they are either at stage one, two, three, or four. For there are but four stages we find in the scripture. Let's list them. Number one, we find what is known as the baby stage. Say with me, church. There. Number two, we find... What is known as the little child stage. So we have the baby stage. We have the little child stage. Then we have the youth stage. And then we have the adult or father stage. Let's go them over one more time. So we have the baby stage. We have the young child stage. We have the youth stage and we have the adult or the father stage. Can somebody give a praise to the Lord? Look at your neighbor and say, what stage are you? Tell them we'll soon find out. Soon find out. What stage are you? Soon find out. Soon find out. So let's begin our discussion today by talking about the baby stage. The baby stage. Peter tells us, yes, he says we must grow in grace and in the knowledge of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the challenge we have from Peter that all of us ought to be growing and growing and growing in Jesus Christ. So Peter, as Peter tells us, you know, yeah, as he tells us about this, this growth and this development, development, he, he highlights in verse 18 two things. He says, grow in grace. That's number one. And the second one, he says, grow in knowledge. So there is a growth that we must take place as it relates to the grace of God. And there's a growth that must take place as it relates to to knowledge, the increase of our knowledge of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen to how the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to the 4. Listen to how Paul addressed for us this growth business. And talk to us about the baby stage. Listen to Paul, 1 Corinthians. We're there. And I, brethren, Paul says, 
I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I'm talking about the baby stage. So Paul says, when I came to you as Corinthians, I could not speak to you as spiritual. Translation for that, as matured. I couldn't address you as adult. And not even as young adult, Paul says. I could not address you as spiritual, mature believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. But Paul says, but rather I had to address you as carnal. I had to address you as babe in Christ. So what we find out is another word being used for babe in Christ. And Paul calls them carnal. Even as babe in Christ. So Paul says in the same Corinthian passage, stay with me everybody, amen. Paul says, I fed you. Yes, I have fed you with milk. That's what we feed babies with. I fed you with milk and not with meat. For either two, he were not able, O oh God, to bear it. Neither yet know are he able, are he able to bear it. So Paul says, when I came to you, you were babies, carnal, and I feed you with milk. And he might have spent a good period of time with you. Good God, Paul says. You are still a baby seed. And he might have to spend six months a year with you. Oh God, Paul says, you're still a baby seed. I still have to be giving you nipple buckle and milk. Listen to Paul as he talked to us, brothers and sisters. He said, for ye are yet carnal. Yeah. For whereas there is among you, Paul calls it, envy, yes, and strife, oh good God. Listen to Paul and division. Are ye not carnal? Yes, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Oh, yeah. So, hear what Paul says in describing for us the baby stage. We now have three words that we can use one is baby, one is carnal, and the other one is as men. Yes, Paul says you are still walking as men, as individual. Oh yeah, brothers and sisters uh, that are still in the natural realm of life. That's what Paul says. That's how you are walking. Oh yes, as babe in Christ. For a while one said, I am of Paul. And another, I am of Apollos, are ye not babes? Are ye not acting like natural men? Are ye not carnal? Oh, are ye not carnal? My brothers and my sisters, as we talk about this baby stage, Try to look at how Peter, Paul, and John address this baby stage. Brothers and sisters, I want us to note a few things about babies. For the very same things and 
features and traits that we find that are common to the natural baby, we find that they are also common to the spiritual baby. So, yes, you might be an adult, yeah, naturally, but spiritually, you're a baby. Because Paul says you are demonstrating baby traits. What, are, what is it that we learn about babies? One of the things we learn about babies, brothers and sisters, is that babies think only about themselves. Come now, talk to me now. Babies think only about them. Babies are not business with nobody else. They only focus on them. So, so I want feeding. I yell and scream. You better bring the feeding. Oh yeah. They, are, they don't care what's happening to you. Babies are just. Can I tell you that's the same way some Christians behave? They are only concerned with them. So, and that, brothers and sisters, that trait allow us to know they are yet at the baby stage of their spiritual development. They have no time for others. It's only about me, myself, and I, and it says that they are at the baby stage. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. One of the few traits we learn about babies is that babies, they are demanding. They are demanding. And if you deny them, brothers and sisters, if you deny their desires, my God, they will protest. And they will protest strongly. Oh, yes, throwing themselves down in tantrum. But that's how babies behave. Don't you see some big persons around us behaving just like that? Every now and again, they go up into a tantrum, protesting. Oh, yeah. Some of them protest by not coming to church. And some protest by saying and not singing on the choir again. You baby. They are at the baby stage. So they are protesting and they are self-centered. And they are, oh God, they are, they, are, they are throwing tantrum to get your attention. Oh, oh God. What? brothers and sisters we understand is that they are at the baby stage mm -hmm. oh yeah the baby stage the baby stage brothers and sisters not only do we know that about baby one more let's go to number another thought babies they seek amen to pacify Oh God, their feelings at all times. Yes, they want you to pacify their feelings at all times. Oh, so babies, their feelings become just like their God. And they, oh God, they are saying, why don't you satisfy and pacify and fulfill my feelings? That's how babies operate. You that there are some baby Christian, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that behave the same way. They have turned their feelings into their God. Oh, God, oh, God, you want to see trouble yet in Spanish song, offend some people's feelings. Because their feeling is like their God. They are at the baby stage. Oh yes. You want to see trouble and rumpus. Just offend their feelings. Oh 
God. They are ready to put down their Bible, put down their songbook, and tell you a piece of their mind. Because you know what? They are still at the baby stage. They are still at the baby stage. Spiritually, they are just big babies. Big overgrown babies. Oh God, still drinking milk. My God. God and still in diapers. Hear me, my brother. Oh, Paul, Peter, John said, We must grow up. We must what? Grow up and become mature. Let God be God and not our feelings be God. Let God be God and give God praise and glory. Can somebody shout a praise to Jesus? We got to get out. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Hear me, we have to get out of the baby stage. And there's some, there's some Christians, you know, come with me now. They are in church for a long time. And they're still at baby stage. Want you to feed them with milk. Hear me now. Hear me now. Talk to me a little bit. Hear me. Hear me. When I came to Spanish Town, you notice I never carry no nipple bottle. For I don't come, brothers and sisters, to feed believers who are here five and six and seven and here, ten and fifteen and twenty years with no nippy bottle. You must grow up in the name of the Lord our God and become mature. Oh yes, you can't expect to be fed, oh God, with nipple bottle. That is for those who just get converted. Who just came to Jesus. They are the ones that we must feed with nippy bottle. Not you. Oh good God. I want to use some language. But this is Sunday morning. Help me Jesus. Help me Jesus. You big old grayback. Baby. Oh Lord God Almighty. Should I, you should I eat bones. And tough meat. You should I eat some big strong yellow yam. Oh God, oh God, you should be eating hard meat and food. Oh God, you just want nipple buckle to be baby fed. Hear me, it's time to go up. For what you're doing, you're exposing yourself. Oh God, to heresy and false doctrine to invade you. All because of what? Your lack of growth and development in the Lord Jesus Christ. You're exposing yourself to be carried away with every wind of doctrine, my brother and sister, because of your lack of growth. Lack of growth. Oh God, lack of growth in the faith of a Lord, of a Lord Jesus Christ. Peter says we must grow. Grow in grace. Yeah. Paul says he are yet carnal, acting like men, babies in the Lord. What else we learn about babies? Babies? They are easily hurt. Look at your neighbor and say, I hope I know you. Yeah, look at the next neighbor and say, I hope I know you. Easily hurt. Everything offend you. If the pass and don't greet you, you get offended. You're a baby. Yes, everything hurt you. Yes, you baby. Everything there, easily hurt. And my God. God, oftentimes, brothers and sisters, they are so jealous. Oh God, oh God, they require undivided attention all, all the time, brothers and sisters. You just have to be with them, with them. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. My God, you have to lift them up and carry them on your shoulder. Whoever and whoever and whoever. You big baby. Why don't you grow up? God wants us to grow up in the grace and knowledge of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. We must get out of the baby stage. We must move out of the baby stage. Oh yeah. 
Peter was addressing the believer and telling them about the baby stage. Can I tell you about baby? One or two more things about babies. Yes, I had four of them and I had to grow up four of them. Yes, so I learned a little things about babies. Babies live to be served. Yes, babies live to be served. Yes. So you get up six o'clock and beat them, feed them, fill them belly, then just turn over and drop asleep. And my God, then by time two or three hours time, then get up again and start spinning. You better realize, say, oh God, you better go clean them up. And my God, and you better have oh feeding again and feed them. And my God, and, and by time you quit two or three hours time, at them that again. Oh God, are you think you can get a break and you're going to lay down for one hour before half hour gone, you hear them. I call them, I call you. For they live to be just like some Christian. They live to be served. You have to serve them 24 7, my brother and sister, because they are, uh, they are at the baby stage. You can't stay there. You have to grow. Yes, God wants us to grow up. The baby live to be served. Yes. Oh God. Oh God. They live to be served. My God. And don't want to develop. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Come with me, my brothers and sisters. Come with me and let's raise one or two more things. So we can get to the young child stage. Yes, the baby, they can only, they can only digest liquid, brothers and sisters. Liquid is their diet. Milk only can they process milk. Yes, that's all. Nothing more. Milk, 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 milk in the morning. Milk in the noon time. Milk in the evening time. Yes, and you have some Christians just like that. They want milk in the morning. Yeah. And they come, they want milk on Wednesday. And they come Sunday morning and me must serve them milk again. Hear me, me not serve no milk this morning though. Hear me. You have to eat two chicken legs this morning. And some piece of pork. And piece of yellow yam from down a trailer on here. Yes, so you have to have some tea. You have to grow up. You have to be mature in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, brother. It can't be pure milk, 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 milk. Oh, no. No, sir. No. Because when you drink pure milk, sir, every minute you're hungry. And you have your depend on people to come feed you again. Yes. Paul, Timothy, Paul, Peter, and John wanted to encourage the, the believers to grow up. Yes, so that they could eat some hard food and not just be baby, 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 baby. Every minute they might cry like guinea pig. Cry, cry, cry. All day they might cry. Them weak, them weak, them weak. Oh God. God. Have you you watch the young babies? Have you watched young babies? Yeah. Young babies, they cry. And you wonder why every time they cry, but they never try to sing. Because they sing, they could provide some melody. But they're not into the singing business. It's just cry, they won't cry. And get miserable and annoying here by brothers and sisters because that's what baby do and that's what that's what baby operate oh god that they could sing do you know you have some believers that are still at the baby stage that's what they do too they just cry and cry and cry they cry over everything you're trying to say to them why don't you stop for a while and try and sing. 
Why don't you try and sing and make melody in somebody's heart so that somebody could be blessed, uh, oh God, and somebody could get a miracle and stop the cry. Stop the cry. Oh God, the cry. Watch the baby, brothers and sisters. I'm still talking about the baby. The baby. The baby Christian. Simil similarly, it's what the baby Christian do. The baby Christian, similarly, they tried to speak. But when they tried to speak, you can't hear a word they say. All, they are, all you're getting is babbling. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And you don't know what that means. But they never make sense. That's what babies do. It's the same thing with baby Christian. What they say no make no, no sense. What they say no make no sense. And you're trying to tell them, you don't see a pure foolishness here at all. It don't make no sense. That's what baby Christians do. And you're trying to them, you have to get the word of God and prayer and fasting in your system and, and learn to grow and develop and, and exercise the spiritual discipline by witnessing to somebody and being involved in worship to the Lord our God so you can grow and develop so that when you talk, it now makes sense. If everybody around you telling you, say, why well, your talk is foolish, why don't you shut up? Yes, because it means you're still at the baby stage. It's not making any sense. It's just babbling. Oh yeah, just like a young child. Yes, it's time when there's a need to grow up. Grow up, grow up, grow up. You see, my brothers and sisters. Oh God, as we think through this, brothers and sisters, the infant characteristics. Oh God, of a young child. Amen. Amen. Oh God, are very prominent in the life. Oh God, of many, many church members, brothers and sisters that are at the baby stage. And Paul said of them, while they are at the baby stage, they are yet carnal. And they hack like men or like mankind without any spiritual insight knowledge and revelation oh god to appreciate the things of the lord our god oh my brother oh my sister god wants us to grow up God wants us to develop in grace and in knowledge of our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody give the Lord a praise? Can somebody give the Lord one more praise, somebody? God wants us to grow up. To grow up, to grow up, to grow up, to grow up. Yes, we can be kind of, can I tell you, brothers and sisters? Yes. Yeah, yeah, as we think about these characteristics, yes, brothers and sisters, and we think about the baby characteristics, the babies, natural babies are born into a family. They're born into the family. Yes, we, the Christians, are born into the family of God, which is known as the church family. Yes, the church family of God. The natural baby, yes, the natural baby, if the parents are alert, oh God, and they, see, they don't see some signs and some evidence of development in the child, what the parents and guardians will do will go to look out for specialists to make what? Assessment, evaluation. Yes, brothers and sisters, to find out, is something wrong with my child? Does my child have a, a, a deficiency? Oh, yeah. So they go and seek out specialists. My brothers and sisters, I suggest to us that in the church family, 
in the church family brothers and sisters there are many of us that have been born into the church family and some of us have been born in here for a long time but we're not growing and we're not developing good God we are we go for the calling some spirit you are specialists to do some assessment on some of us how can we be in the church family for so long? But our level and growth is just retarded. My God, there's no development. Oh, of knowledge or in grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our lifestyle is not representing the Lord our God. Hear me, brothers and sisters. We got to call up the specialists. To do some evaluation. Good God. The specialist has to come in. Come run some tests. For you can't stay at baby stage no longer. In the name of Jesus. You have to grow and develop. Talking about the baby stage. Paul calls it the carnal stage. God wants us to be develop and be spiritual can somebody show the praise to jesus from the baby stage we go to the child stage the what stage child stage yes we go to the child stage yes for many christians brothers and sisters many christians grow past the baby stage. Many Christians go past the baby stage into the childhood stage. But brothers and sisters, but they never pass this stage known as the childhood stage. They get past the baby stage. Yeah. So at least they can drink some caramel porridge now. Yes, and it's not just pure milk, but they can drink some caramel porridge or some oats porridge or some banana porridge. Yes, but they just never get past this childhood stage. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Listen to what 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12 says. Let's go Bible. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12. Let's read Bible, brothers and sisters. John says, I write unto you, little children. You see them? You see who John was writing to? I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. So they are saved. Their sins are forgiven. That means they are what? Saved. They are at the child stage, but they are saved. Their sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You, you're given you for his name's sake. Yes. So John says, I write unto you, you little children. You have salvation. You see, brothers and sisters, John speaks to us about three or four different groups in John. We'll come to another one. John, when you read the book of John, you'll know that John refers to one stage and he calls them little children. Yes, little children, very immature. John refers to another group which we will come to and he calls them young men. And then John refers to another group that he calls father or adult. And then when he's referring to all of them together, John put all of them together and says, dear children. For John was saying, if you're at the young child stage, you are saved. If you're at the baby stage, you are saved. If you're at the young adult stage, you are saved. If you're at the mature father who says you are saved so john called all of them dear children they're saved but they are at different stage of their stage 
is of their spiritual development. Can somebody just give another praise to Jesus? So John challenges us now and Peter and Paul about the characteristics yes characteristics of the children's stage yes yes yeah and what do we know about natural children just run our minds and begin to think about natural children and how they operate yes let me raise up some of them for us they are often brothers and sisters untruthful yes yeah they are often what untruthful yes without any reason young children will just tell you lies and don't talk the truth yes brothers and sisters they are often untruthful just like some Christians some Christians are just untruthful without any pressure, without any burden, without any difficulty, without any reason at all. They just tell you. How are you doing, my brother? I'm on top of the world, you liar. You're not on top of no world. The world is on top of you, is what you should have said. So that somebody can make an intervention into your life and help you get the world off your head. It's because they are at the child stage of their development. They do not practice to tell the truth. So you can't even ask them how they're doing. For they're not going to tell you the truth. Yeah. Oh yes. I'm talking about the child stage. Oh yes, the child stage. Just like some Christians. Yeah. No. Just like some Christians. If some Christians tell you to run, maybe you better kneel down and start creep. Oh yes. Because brothers and sisters, they're just not into speaking the truth. Oh yeah. Just look at your neighbor and say, I know that's not you. Yeah, tell the next neighbor, I know that's not you. Yes, I know that's not you. Praise the Lord. Can somebody shout another praise to Jesus? Shout another praise to Jesus. I know that is not you. Yes. I'm talking about the child stage of development. Children are by nature. Look at their traits and their characteristics. They are envious. And often cruel. Oh yes. That's children. They are envious. And often cruel. You don't know. Uh, you don't watch that two year old you have. Or that three year old you have in the house. And wait until the next baby come. And you see what happened. Grab the next baby by the hand. Pull them off of the bed. You, think, you know who going to get in trouble? And you for neglect, for you never understand that your own three-year-old could be that cruel, yes, and envious because that three-year-old is now thinking that their space is now gone. They don't have priority of place anymore for another baby is in town. So they become very envious and cruel. All of you young parents, you better listen to me. I passed that way before. So I can talk and now out of experience. I've been there already and know what I'm saying. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. Oh, yes, it's the same way with the young child, say, of Christian. The brothers and sisters can become cruel. Envious. Yes, and when they are envious, they'll still tell you, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, I'm living for Jesus, and they're cruel. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, it's because they're at the child stage of their development. 
envious and cruel. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. And can I tell you about this child stage a little bit more? With the, with the child stage of development for the natural child, you just try and rebuke children and see what happened to them. Oh God. When you rebuke them, they come like a martyr. It is as if you kill them. Oh God. It's like they throw their hand in the ear, complain to everybody. Act in certain way as if, my God, you have committed murder. Because they are impressionists seeking for attention. Oh God, hear me, my brother. It's a stage of their development. Do you see anybody around church like that? Always looking for attention. And to create an impression. You need to grow up. Stop looking for attention. And my God. Oh God. Why don't you just work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that God will reward you one day. If you labor for the Lord Jesus Christ. And try and stop trying to get everybody attention. You don't need it. You are at the baby stage. Of your development. Can I tell you? Can I tell you about the child stage? Oh, can I tell you like another thing about them? Let me raise one more about them. You see the child them, the child stage you now? Let me come down a little bit. Let me walk a little bit. You see when they are at the child stage? I don't know if you have them around your place. Yeah. But everything you say, they repeat it. Everything you say, repeat it. Good or bad. If you curse bad word, then curse bad word. If you tell the neighbor that you're not here, tell the neighbor I'm not here. Mommy, if you tell you I'm not here, see we are so. Mommy, if you tell you I'm not here, because they're acting like parrots. They repeat everything. It means that there is no sense of discernment to know what to say and what not what to what not to say. Here, brother, it's the same thing you find among some Christians. They repeat everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help me. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. So one lady came to me one time. One lady, one Christian lady, you know? She came to me to make a complaint against her husband. And when she come to me to make the complaint against her husband, she started to tell me what the husband do. And then she started to tell me what the husband say. And when she started to tell me what the husband said, Jesus have mercy. Me just hear one whole release of pure profanity. Are the Christian lady talk to me? Then? She had tell me. And she says, a whole release. Every color you name it. She was just releasing them. Trying to tell me. What husband said. I mean, I this, this, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because she's at the child stage of her spiritual development. She's acting like a parrot. Not making a sense of judgment to discern what to say and what not to say. Oh, her spiritual growth is weak. She is yet carnal, Paul would say, at the childhood stage, acting just like a parrot. 
what God wants us to do as we grow and develop is to have the capacity and the ability to make discernment, brothers and sisters, to decide what to say, what not to say, because what? There is a sense of maturity in our heart at believers. We are growing in the grace and the knowledge of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Can somebody give a praise to Jesus? Somebody shout another praise to Jesus. Somebody shout one more praise to Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, no parrot around here. No spiritual parrot around here. Somebody say, no parrots around here. We must have discernment and be able to decipher right from wrong and what to say and what not to say. Are you with me, everybody? Are you with me? Just give another praise to Jesus. I'm talking about the child stairs. The parrots. Yes, that are not growing up. Oh, yeah. Parrot. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. It's called the child stage. They have, oh, God. They have, brothers and sisters. They have regular and con and constant sorry they have regular and constant emotional outbursts yes yes regular and constant emotional outbursts and are easily puffed up just like some believers Yes. yes. Some believers just puff up every little thing, you know. Every little thing. Yeah, God. If you call some people name and you call their name, them puff up. Yeah. Good God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Just easily puffed up. And they go into an, in their emotional outbursts. Oh, yes. Because they're at the childhood stage of their spiritual development and you're trying to tell them you got to move out of that stage that's why you're trying to pull them to come to fasting and prayer that's why you're trying to pull them to come to bible study for you want them to be what true disciples and good disciples of the lord jesus christ you're trying to get them to prayer meeting Get them into Bible study. You're trying to tell them, come to Sunday school and study God's word. Let it, oh, let the word of God dwell in your heart richly. Oh, God. So you stop the puffing up for your puff, puff, puff. Oh, yes, until you're going to burst. Everything you puff off. Like you can't stop the world from spinning. The world go on with you or without you. With your, your, your huff and puff and you want to blow everybody down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You must blow down yourself. And stop the huffing and puffing for every little thing. If somebody offend you, go find them and talk it over with them. We are walking and I put your mouth up on everybody for. After we not trouble you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Somebody, if somebody offend you, read Matthew 18, 21, 22. Go to them. You alone. Because you're at your child stage. You're too immature. You're too babies. You're too carnal. That's why you won't go to them. Go to them. Get some backbone and some stamina and some strength. If they offend you, go to them. And tell them, you know, you offend me. Yes, they must either agree and until you reconcile that and done with that. If they now listen to you, go call somebody else. Now call me. Don't call me, you know. The Bible says go call another believer. Don't say, don't call the church leaders yet. You have to call another believer first. And then when you and the other believer go, and they still not listen to you. Oh, well, that is the time now. You can call me. But everything you run can call me. 
No, nobody wrong come call me. Cause every time you run, come call me. Me start read out the stages and say, Miss, you know, which one are you there? And I say, Oh, so you are, you are a baby or you a young child. You're not spiritually mature. And that me do when you come to me, you know? You know, no? I saw me make the assessment. Cause me assess where you at. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, no. Yes, Jesus. Take it easy. Yes, Lord. Make the assessment, man. Where are you? Childhood stage or adult stage? Good God, help me and keep me near the cross. Somebody shout another praise for Jesus. Shout another praise for Jesus. I'm talking about uh, the stages of growth and development. We talk about the baby stage. Then we're talking about the child stage. Oh, yes. Easily puff up. Yes. Can me tell you one or two more and quit and leave the, child, the children alone? They, they, they love praise. They love what? They love what? Say with me. They love, they love praise. They exist on praise. If you don't praise them, hear me, they stop work. Even if they might work for church and you not praise them, then we just stop work. Drop arms. I say, why you drop arms? Oh, they never give me no praise. They never big me up Sunday morning. They never talk about me. They talk about uh, the other brother and the other sister. They never give me no praise. Yes, it's the child stage of spiritual development. They love praise. Well, the Bible is warning us against that and tell us we must work for Jesus and look forward to when Jesus will say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, rather than, oh God, looking for mankind to praise us. Hear me, my brother. We must look to the Lord Jesus Christ and stop looking to mankind to big us up and give us a praise and a pat on the shoulder. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters. Oh, yes, the child stage, they love praise. Yeah. Yeah. They love it so much that they'll accept it from anywhere. They'll accept it from any source. They'll accept it from anyone because they just love praise. It's because they are in the baby stage and the childhood stage of their spiritual development. Just shout one more praise for Jesus. Shout one more praise for Jesus. Brothers and sisters, just like some believers. My brothers and sisters, come with me. Oh yeah. And therefore... As we ponder through this and walk through this and talk about this. Brothers and sisters, the question, the question for us today, the question for us today, my brothers and sisters, are you a spiritual baby? Don't answer. Just think about it. Are you a spiritual child? Don't answer. Just think about it. Are you a spiritual baby? That Paul refers to as, as carnal or just as a man? Or are you a spiritual child? Just think about it. God would want us to move out of these stages to be getting to what we call the youth stage. The youth stage. Listen to what John says in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 13. I'm reading from the word of the Lord. Listen to John as he gives us some insight about the youth stage. I will, I write unto you, fathers, because he have known, he have known him. That is from the beginning. All right, that's statement number one. That sounds like the adult stage. 
Let's go to the next one. Then it says, I write unto you who? Young men. This is a young people stage. Young adult stage. Because he have what? Overcome the wicked one. Yes, he have overcome the wicked one. When you get to the young adult stage, you have overcome the wicked one. The devil has no control over you. You bind principalities and powers. You plead the blood of Jesus against demonic force and devils and principalities. They have no authority and no control over you. You get up in the middle of your night and you rage war against demons and devils because what? You are the young adults here. You have overcome the wicked one. Old Slewfoot uh, that prowls about like a roaring lion. You have overcome him with the word of your testimony and through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have overcome the wicked one. Read John a little bit more. Overcome the wicked one. Read John a little bit more. John says, I write unto you. Little children, little children, I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. You have a relationship with Jesus. So there, in those, in those verses, you see John give us three categories. John called one the little children. John called one the youth. And then John called the other one what? The Father. Yes, it's about the youth one that we're picking up now to talk about uh, brothers and sisters, spiritual growth. Uh, yes, uh, oh God, oh God, to this stage, the stage of youth, uh, brothers and sisters, is not received and recorded by many people, my brothers and sisters, many individuals, even though they are in the church for a long time. Oh, yeah. Even though they're in the church for a long time, think they would have reached to the youth stage in their spiritual development. My God, you know they have not reached there. Yeah. For when they must stand up and oppose the wicked one, what do we find them doing? Taking shelter and taking coverage and running and hiding away. Oh God, from the darts of the wicked one. But hear me, brother, when you get to this youth stage of spiritual maturity, oh God, for you are going, going to know you are getting deeper and deeper with the Lord Jesus Christ. You are taking on the image and the likeness of God. Hear me, you are growing in your faith and in the grace and in the knowledge of God. Hear me, my brother, you are not afraid of principalities and powers. You're not afraid of demons and devils. You're not afraid. Oh. Even when people want to persecute, you're not afraid. Even if they want to hit against, you're not afraid. In plain Jamaican language, when you get into the youth stage, your back start to get broad and your skin start to get thick for you're not easily offended. People can't say every little thing and offend you. You're going to stand up. Oh God, my God. And hear me, brothers and sisters. Oh, when they throw the darts at you, hear me, my brother. It's going to bounce off or it's going to run off. Hear me, because you're a child of the most high God. You're growing in God. You're taking on God's image. Oh God, you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. You are at the youth stage. Growing strong in God. In this stage called the youth stage. Brothers and sisters, the Christian or the believer is strong in the Lord. This Christian is robust. The Christian is vigilant and watchful in the youth stage. 
anticipating brothers and sisters the darts of the adversary and being prepared to rage war it is at the youth stage he or she brothers and sisters has vision for their life oh god they have vision for the future they have vision over their spiritual growth for their spiritual growth and development oh can i tell you my brother sister at the youth stage they cast a vision for their spiritual development they have spiritual ambition brothers and sisters wanting to grow in god and what's god's purpose being fulfilled in their life i'm talking about growth to the youth stage Understanding God's will and God's purpose. Yes, and being ready to walk into them. Oh, my brothers and sisters, tackling and taking on all the negative vices and forces that may rise up. It is at this stage, the Apostle Paul. He was writing, writing to the Corinthians again. Yes, writing to Corinthians and he tells us something, brothers and sisters, about them. How, how, how we can, how we can reach. Amen, this stage. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11, I want you to listen to Paul's writing Amen with a word of exhortation to the Corinthians. Listen to Paul. Paul says, When I was a child, I did what? I spake as a child. I understood as a child. Yeah. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, yes, young adult, I became a man, I do what? Put away childish things. I put away childish things and now I act like an adult grown up in the image and likeness of God. Listen to Paul as he writes, to the Corinthians, he said, Finally, brethren, finally, brethren, finally, yes, yes, fear well, he says, fear well, Paul said to them, Yeah, oh God, he says, Be, be perfect, watch the word, and the word is mature, be mature, yes. Be of good comfort. Yes, be, yes, of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Paul is saying to us, how the young adult, when you're at the young adult stage of, of, of development, how you act and how you live your life and what are the traits and the characteristics that will be evident in your life. Now you become a peacemaker. Now the mind of Christ is in you. Now, brothers and sisters, you are going on from strength to strength. Now you are bringing comfort to a lot of people. Oh God, you are bringing, and the word comfort, let's interpret it. It means strength. It means come with strength. It's two words. Come mean with and for means strength. So Paul said, now you are coming with strength to those that are weak. Oh God. God, that you are strengthening them and building them up in the faith. That's what happens when you get to the young adult stage. Hear me, therefore, brother, sister. Don't tell me that you get to the young adult stage and you're not strengthening nobody. You're not comforting nobody. 
you're not building up nobody. If you're not building up nobody, comforting nobody, strengthening nobody, it means that you have not yet reached there. It means that maybe you're still at baby stage. I look for nipple bottle. Are you still at child stage? I practice to tell lie. When you get to the young adult stage, you are taking people under your wings. And you are saying, you are challenging them in, them in the name of the Lord. You got to make it. You got to come through. You are guiding them, directing them in the path of righteousness and the things of God. That's what the young adult do. Can somebody shout a praise to Jesus? Somebody shout another praise to Jesus. That's what we are doing when we get to the young adult stage of development. Oh, Lord, help us. We are taking on people. And we are making, like Jesus said, disciple out of them. Yeah. Oh, God. We're not stopping until Christ Jesus is formed inside of them. And they're walking like Jesus walked. Because we are, we are on the case. Like Matlock. Oh God, and we now he's up. And we tell them bluntly, I'm on your case. Because you have to become strong. You have to get robust and vibrant. You have to be a good disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're not afraid to challenge them and make demand on them. Somebody just give the Lord another praise. Somebody just give the Lord another praise. I'm coming on home now. Oh, Lord, help me. Oh, Lord, I'm coming on home now. Brothers and sisters, this is the recommendation and the exhortation we have from Paul. Paul was saying... Brothers and sisters, he determined, determined no longer to be, to be, to be governed, amen, amen, by childish activities. Paul says, I don't want you who oh got to have any desire to be governed any longer by childish, childish activities. No, Paul says, Grow to that. Let of that. Leave that alone. Now we are going on to perfection. We are going on to what? Maturity. Growing towards what? Spiritual maturity. That's where we are going. Nobody will deter us. We are focused. When you get to this stage in life. In your spiritual life, nobody can twist you and turn you and tell you a Nancy story. They can't even bring people business to you because you're not going to listen. For you're going to rebuke them. Oh yeah, for you are growing to what? Spiritual maturity. Oh yes, yes brothers and sisters. And you're taking on the image and likeness of God. And every day you just want to be like Jesus. Like Sanki said, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All of his wondrous compassion and purity. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen. Mm, wondrous compassion. Oh God. oh God, oh God, oh God. Mm, spirit divine. Oh, my nature refined. Beauty of Jesus. Sing it again and say the beauty of Jesus be seen. Oh God, help me. Oh Lord, all oh. wondrous.
us compassion and purity. Oh God. Oh how spirit divine. Oh my nature refined. Beauty of Jesus. Can we just give another praise to the Lord, everybody? One more praise to Jesus, everybody. Oh, yeah. Let's look at your neighbor and say, are you understanding what pastor is saying? That's the next person. Is it making sense to you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me sum this up, brothers and sisters. You know that there is a, quite a little bit of similarity between stage one and stage two. And similarly, between stage three, the youth stage, and the father stage, there's quite a bit of similarities. For you listen to John. This is what John says. Let me just read one verse and maybe just highlight two other verses about the fourth stage. John says... Amen. In First John chapter, Amen, chapter two, verse thirteen. First John two thirteen. This is what John said: "I write unto you, fathers. Why do I write? Because ye have what known him. Ye have known him. That is from the beginning. So John says the matter." Pure believer, you know. Know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. But you know Jesus not only as a Jesus who come on the cross of Calvary. The mature believer know Jesus as the creator from the beginning. Yes, so the mature believer is not only seeing the Jesus on the cross. The mature believer is seeing Jesus in creation when he says, let there be. And there was. So the mature believer is seeing Jesus as sovereign, creator, upholder, sustainer of the universe. He has a different understanding, brothers and sisters, than the babe in Christ. Yes, he's having a wider and broader perspective of God and of Jesus Christ and who he is. Creator, sustainer, upholder of a universe that is worthy to be worshipped and praised and adored. So when you listen to how John coins this brothers and sisters about the father Yes, you see, this is the final stage in the, in the growth process, in this process of spiritual growth and development, brothers and sisters. It's the final stage. It's the maturity stage. Amen. It can be reached by all. One more time. It can be reached by all, but it is reached only, oh God, by a limited amount of individual. But it can, yes, be reached by all, for God has provided enough grace so that every believer who has that intense desire for true discipleship can reach to this fourth stage, oh God, the Father stage. Mature in Christ. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, let's say a word about this mature and this fourth stage in Christ. For some people are of the opinion that when you get to the fourth stage and you're mature, you have no more longing and desire for God. Let me tell you, it's the other way around. When you get to the fourth stage, your desires and your passion for Jesus are much greater than when you were a baby stage. Your appetite and your longing, like the like the oh, like the heart panted after the water brook said this hard. So panted my soul after thee. That's what happened when you get to stage four. 
the more mature you become in Christ is the deeper your longing and your passion for the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the more of God you have. Is the more of God you want. That, oh God, now you know you have reached stage four. For the more of God you want, is the more you have, is the more of God you want. You get to that stage, you cry out like Paul. I have not yet attained. But this one thing I do, I'm reaching for it and I'm pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There is a divine dissatisfaction that fools your heart when you reach to this stage. Oh God, you go to your bed night and day with a divine dissatisfaction that drives you and propel you. I want more of God. That's what maturity does. Maturity builds in you passion, builds in you desire, builds, builds in you dissatisfaction and longing for the most high God. Somebody show the praise to Jesus. Somebody show another praise to Jesus. That's what maturity does. Intensifies your desire. Your drive. Oh God for God. Paul says. I find in me. A divine. Dissatisfaction. That is driving me. I have not yet attained. But I am pressing. And when he was saying this you know. Paul. Had lived for about 25 years. He had preached out dozens of churches. He had gone. He had gone. He had seen miracles after miracles after miracles. Paul had gone up into the third heavens with God. Seen things that are not normal for human beings to see. That's where he had reached with God. But then in the midst of all of that, he was saved. There's a drive in me. There's a passion in me. There's a dissatisfaction in me. There's an urge in me. Brothers and sisters, it's been like the place, like where Moses was. Where Moses was. Moses had seen God's miracle. Moses had seen God's revelation. Moses had seen the hand of God come down and perform miracles in his life. But Moses had a passion. Moses had a dissatisfaction. Moses had a desire for more of God. And Moses cried out unto the Lord, Lord, show me your glory. Let your glory come and sit upon me. Oh God, I want more of God. That's what happened when you get to the father stage. Your passion is ignited to another level. Stand with me, everybody. And your desire for God cannot be stopped, cannot be quenched. Because you just want God and more God and more God and more God. Oh God, there is a desire. It's the fourth stage. The final stage. Oh God. Oh God. Yeah, it is at this stage as a believer. You are stable in your faith. Come with me. You are establishing your faith. You are stable. You are steady. Oh God, like Paul says, you are unmovable. You, are, you understand your justification. And you have peace with the Lord our God. Can somebody show the praise of Jesus? Somebody shout out the praise of Jesus. Oh yeah. It is at this stage you can take Romans 8 and verse 28. And you can live by it morning, noon and night. You can say to yourself, all things work together for good. Because I love God and I know God. I have been called and predestinated by the Lord our God. All things. Because I am at the mature fatherhood stage. Brothers and sisters, 
Oh yes, who oh, to God that everybody, every believer would get to this stage or strive to get to this stage so we can truly give God glory and praise and none of somebody raise your hand and shout another praise to Jesus. Give another praise to Jesus. Yeah. When you get to this stage, so you can take up the passage in Philippians and say, I can do all things to Christ that strengthened me. There's no boundaries, there's no limit. When you get to the stage in Christ, there's no boundary and there's no limit. It is God's capacity an ability that is now working through you and you now can say oh God to everybody I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me so Lord help us to move from the baby stage Jesus to move from the childhood stage Jesus to get to the young adults and the fatherhood stage. Help us, Jesus. Can somebody raise your hand and say, help me, Jesus. Say, help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus, to move out of stage one and stage two. To strive to get to stage three and four. Help us, Jesus. It is so doing that we're going to carry this gospel to the lost and dying world. And be the true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen. Lord, yes, Lord. Spirit divine, oh, my nature refined in the beauty of Jesus. Be seen me. Let's sing it as our prayer to the Lord, everybody. Let the Beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and beauty. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh, how spirit divine. Time, one more time, let oh, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Oh, God, all this wondrous compassion and purity. Oh, God, oh, wow. Jesus be seen. We're gonna sing it again. We're gonna sing it again. It's our prayer to God today. It's my prayer to God. I trust it's your prayer. Oh God, oh God. Wondrous compassion and Beauty of 
prayers at church today Lord for this is our prayers believers this is our prayer Heavenly Father that the beauty of Jesus will be seen in us as we grow in grace in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we be true disciples moving from baby stage and from child stage moving from carnality from the state of the natural man to be mature, to be spiritual, to be the young adult or the father in Jesus Christ. This is, Lord, taking on your image and your likeness, Father. Hear our prayer and our cry today, Jesus. As believers, we cry unto you today. For we want to be true disciples of Jesus Christ. Your hearts cry today. God's cry today. Maybe there's somebody here today. Ready to pray. The believers are already prayed. Maybe there's someone here that is not a Christian. You have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus. It's now your time for us to have a prayer with you. Oh, I will not be silent. How that going? I will not be silent. Is there somebody that's not a Christian? And I will not be Will you come now? Silent. We're going to pray with you. You're not a believer. Will you come now? Yes. Yes. You made it to the house of God today. You have a desire to worship God. Why don't you just surrender all and give him your all, give him your heart, give him your mind. Yes, if you're not a believer, will you come now? Would you walk down Please. this altar and we didn't say yes to Jesus? Jesus. 
all of my words. Is there somebody else coming to Jesus? Here Come now. Prayer time. Come now. Is there one more person coming to Jesus? Will you come now? Will you come now? Will you come now? Receive my worship. All of my worship. And I will not be in love. He says, give me your heart and I give you my father's kingdom. With the heart we believe with our mouth confession is made. Jesus is the only name given on earth whereby someone will be saved. If you ask him to come into your heart, he will and he will save you. Salvation is not by feeling. Salvation is by faith in Jesus. Will you believe him now? Bow your heads with me. And as you bow your head, just say a prayer. Say, Lord, come into my heart. Say, Lord, save me. Say, Lord, I thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving me, for washing me in the blood of the Lamb and making me whole. I give my life to you and I will serve you for the rest of my days in Jesus name Lord you have heard this young man's cry you have heard his plea God you are not slack concerning your promises I ask you to the Holy Spirit of heaven that you will save him blot out his sins and his transgression and make him whole in the name of the Lord our God. I commend him to you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go, go Deacon. Deacon, take him. Young men, as you stand here. Young men, everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. Look at me. Everybody stand up. Look at me. Church, uh, here's a group of young men. Many of them have been playing football. They're part of the football competition. You know, even yesterday they were at Congress playing. We thank God for them. And it's part of our... It's part of our responsibility to disciple them for the Lord Jesus Christ. To point them to the Lord. Yes, to tell them about Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and Savior. Only name given on earth whereby a man might be saved is the name of Jesus. Young men, hear me. None of you are not too small to die. In my time, in my lifetime, I've buried young children as young as any one of you here. Yes, die and gone. Some to a devil's hell. Because they did not ask Jesus to come into their heart. Today, while you stand here, you have an opportunity to ask Jesus to come into your heart so that you might be saved. You have a choice to either accept him or to what? Remember what they said of Jesus and Barabbas? They said, away with Jesus. And they said what? Give us who? 
Barabbas, the notorious criminal. That's what they ask for. That they get. You have an opportunity today to say, give me Jesus. Give me life. Give me direction. Give me purpose. Give me destiny for my life. None of you right here standing here today know what is God's plan and purpose for your life. Give God your life and let God guide you into his purpose and destiny for your life. Young men, I want you to hear me. Every single one of you. Yes, whether you're six year old, five year old, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. And this is what he says. Give me your heart and I give you my father everlasting kingdom. Will you ask Jesus to come into your heart today? Yes, you can. Say, say with me. Into my Amen, say into my heart Oh God come into my heart Lord Jesus come in to stay come in to very softly very softly why invite Reverend Dawkins if he can come and, and, and pray over these young men for us with your heads bowed everybody at the altar nobody looking around nobody looking around with your heads bowed it's coming to stay coming to stay I pray. I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you and honor you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for these young men. Well, they are boys by the natural development stage. But even so, you came to die for them. And Lord, I pray for every one of them today. I pray that the hand of God will rest upon them. Lord, I remember when I was but their age, you rescued me from the clutches of sin. You saved me as a branch from the burning. Only 13 years old and you saved me. I know, God, you can save every one of them. As I heard your voice many years ago, I know even now you can speak to them, O oh God. As you spoke to Samuel, O oh God, I pray you'll speak to them. As you spoke to David, O oh God, in the backside of the desert, you will speak to them. And I pray, God, that the overwhelming love of God will grip their hearts, that they will never be able to say no to you. They will never be able to reject you, Jesus Christ. So I pray, God, for them. I pray for every one of them, even as they prepare to go to school tomorrow. We pray, O oh God, that you'll pull the borders of your mantle over them. We pray that the hand of God will be upon them. We pray, God, that you'll touch their mental faculties. And that, Lord God Almighty, they will not become a statistics of this country. We so decree and declare it. But we pray even now that the blood of Jesus Christ 
which was shed upon Calvary's cross will now, O oh God, be stamped upon their hearts and their lives today. We claim every soul on this altar for the kingdom of Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your abundant blessings and grace. Thank you, God, that your hands are not short and your ears are not heavy. Touch them right now. Rest your hand upon every one of them. Oh, blessed Father, thank you for hearing and for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Let's praise the Lord, everybody. Young men, we have prayed. And like Pastor said, he gave his life to the Lord at age 13. Some of you here are just about that age today. You can make a decision. But every one of you have to make a decision. And even as you stand at the altar today, I'm going to ask you all to make a decision. Will you serve Jesus? You see, you can trick me. You can trick your coach, Brother Romain. But you can't trick God. You can't fool me. You can't fool your coach though. But you can't fool God. I am asking every one of you. Today, the seventh day of April 2024. To make a decision for or against Jesus. A decision for Jesus. Or a decision against Jesus. You make a decision to live for him, to serve him, to follow him, to preach the gospel of Jesus and tell others about Jesus and lead them to the cross. Today as you stand here and you're making a decision in your own heart that you are going to live for Jesus. Just raise your hand with me. Raise your hand. Everybody have to make their own decision. You have to make your own decision. You're making a decision. Don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at your friend. Don't look at the next young man beside you. Every man. This is where the Jamaican proverbs become real. Every tub. Yeah. Every man has to give an account of his own life before God. Stand with me, church. Stretch your hands towards them. Stretch your hands and say, Father, we commend them to you and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blessings over their life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In their going out and in their coming in. And when they lay their head to rest, may the hand of God be upon their lives. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Surround them with your love and with your mercy and your grace. Amen. 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 Well then. Stand with me, stand with me, everybody. Can we can we one more time? I will not be silent. That's a that's a closing song. Mm -hmm. Will not be silent, and I, I will always worship you. Join us six o'clock this evening for evening service at six o'clock. Reach over and greet somebody. Tell them God bless them. Greet 
somebody else and tell them God bless them. Oh yeah.